In this video, I'm going to go over how to create adjustment layers with hue and saturation, black and white, and curves and gradient map, just in case you want to change some elements about your photos non-destructively. So for example, if I have this flower, what I can do is be in the Essentials workspace. And so I went to the icon up here and I'm inside Essentials. And I've actually reset it. Um, and I, I made one change by closing out these tab groups on the side. So this is why my workspace looks like this. And if I go to this adjustments window, which is also available down here with this icon that looks like a circle, all of the settings are inside here uh, as text rather than icons. These are adjustment layers and they are placed on your layers panel when you click on one and they create a photographic setting that will alter all of the layers underneath, uh, but alter them in a way that is non-destructive. So for example, if I click on this first one, which is brightness and contrast, you'll see it, it has added in an element of brightness and contrast to my document here that also has a layer mask. And we're gonna come back to that in a minute. If I click on the brightness and contrast, it will open up in the properties panel here a window where I can then change the overall brightness of my image. So this is adding more white into the image and more dark. Um, and if I want to increase the, um, the range of lights and darks, I could use the contrast here. I say I want to do something a little bit funkier though. Say I want to change the overall color of my image. I can go to hue and saturation. And this one is kind of interesting because if I check this colorize box, you'll see it has changed the overall tone of my image to the hue that is here. So if I drag this back and forth, right? If I want it to be a very blue image, right now we're just seeing that it's turning a little bit gray. And that's because the saturation here is not at a high level. If you're not seeing this properties window, that might be because you've not clicked on this, doc, this element right here, or you can go to windows and property window and property. And so now I've increased the overall saturation of my image. Now, one thing that's interesting is what if I just want this to affect just one part of my image? So what I can do is I'm going to delete this out. I'm going to make a selection around my shape. And the easiest way to do that is with the select and mask. So I'm going to go select and mask. It's going to come up with this window. I'm going to switch this to overlay. So it's a little bit easier to see. And right now it's gonna show me the masked areas in red. And so when I'm in the quick selection brush, I can drag it over my image like this. And actually this is kind of interesting because maybe the red is actually a little bit hard to see with my color here. So I might switch this to a blue just temporarily. And that's gonna make it a lot easier to see the image that's there. And I can zoom in, hold down spacebar for the hand tool and let's see. And so I went a little bit over, so I might hold down Alt just to push it back in, or Option to push it back in so I get that negative brush. Or you can come up here and press negative so it's gonna go do the opposite. And I'm just doing a generally light, light sort of brush here. So let's hold down Alt and paint this back in, paint this back out. And that is good enough for me for right now. Now, what I then do is scroll down to the output settings, twirl this down, and let's output this to a selection for right now. So what it's gonna do is when I say okay, it's gonna give me the marching ants around my shape. So right now I've got this nice mask around my shape here. And then if I go to an adjustments layer, such as the hue and saturation one, notice that right now nothing has changed. If I check this colorize box, notice that it's changing just the color of the mask. And so what has happened is this mask that was created was from our selection. So if I go back a couple steps, right? I have my selection here. And when you have a selection and click on any of the adjustment layers, so if I went to black and white, for example, and I click on this, it's going to put the adjustment layer inside only this part of the mask is going to attach the, the selection to a mask on the adjustment layer. So you see that it took that selection, applied it to the adjustment layer. And now 
you know, what's kind of cool is what if I wanted something different for the background? What if I go in and I go to adjustments and I go to hue and saturation and notice that if I want everything here, let's colorize it. Right now, everything is red. What I could do is duplicate my mask. So if I hold down Alt or Option, and it's going to replace my layer mask. So I held down Alt or Option and dragged it to that. And then if I invert this layer mask, now we see that hue and saturation is affecting everything behind it because white reveals and black conceals. And this one is just having my, um, my black and white affecting on the inside of that shape. The other way to do this is if I drag this hue and saturation below my shape, this is the other way to do it, right? So again, because if I have black and white with this selection here, it's going to go through and see just inside this shape. And I'll hold down Alt, it'll show me white reveals, black conceals. Press escape or press the another layer to get out of this. And if I go to adjustments layer, adjustment layers and hue and saturation, because it's between these two layers and the black and white isn't really going to be affected. Um, this is one of those that you can kind of get away with this. Let's make this blue in the background. And this is where I might come in and, you know, you could touch up these edges by pressing the paintbrush. And I press B for the paintbrush and I could paint back in to so some of these elements here. There we go. Paint that back in. And this is, you can see my opacity is set to 61. Like this, maybe I want these ones to also be black and white, just to clean up those edges a little bit. So now when we look back at our black and white layer, hold on Alt, you'll see that I've added in just a little bit of softness around that. The other options that you can do for working with adjustment layers, if I delete out both of these, Inside here, if you click down at the bottom, you've got a couple other ones that are kind of neat. If I go to solid color, this will just create a full color fill that you can have on your layer. And so say I needed this, I'm gonna un unlock this by clicking on it once, drag this above. And if I bring my selection back, and I'm just gonna do a quick selection using the quick selection tool. down alter option to push that back in and I mask this out really quickly then I've got that background set behind it and so this is kind of nice for being able to um, being able to have images that you want to composite together with a colored background and then you can start to do things like with blend modes but we'll get into that a little bit later the most important thing to know is this idea of using adjustment layers to non-destructively edit the colors or the saturation or the brightness levels inside your photo.